Hello, welcome to Jeannie's Art Adventures. Um, I'm resining today an old tray. Um, had it for ages. Just a, you can tell, bog standard wooden tray. And what I did about three weeks ago is just did a pour over it here. Um, if you can see, it's just there's a few little bits of metallics and sparkle in there. Some of the paints are metallic as well, but they're not varnished, so they look quite dull at the moment. I've cleaned it off with some fairy dish soap and uh, I just washed it over that, then I dried it, then I've wiped over it with some alcohol. Whoops, a couple of little holes in it there I didn't notice. Oh well, I'll fill them up with a bit of resin, won't notice. I'm using this um, ultra cast resin. Oops, get it in thing. It's a two to one, so basically one part hardener to two parts, whatever the other bit's called. Um, so, right, just turn this little jug round. Yeah, so if I do 200 mils of this, I've made sure my table's level. Hairs in my eyes. So, you have to excuse me getting right on top of it like this, but I've got eyesight problems, so I can't see unless I get really close. And I'm going to do 200. That's it of that, and then a hundred of the other one. Just wipe my fingers because that's a bit sticky now. I don't really want to glue my hair together. Won't be the first time. Oh, that's tough to undo. Right. I have used this resin before, and I do like it. It is a proper art resin. They also do one that's called a doming resin, which is for like jewellery making. So I didn't know till I started looking in, there were so many different sorts of varnishes and resins and things. So I used to just trundle along the art shop before when I was doing conventional painting and just buy a spray varnish and that was it. But with these pores, I think they look good with a sort of really shiny varnish, but occasionally you get ones that... A matte varnish will actually look better. This is awful. It's got them all stuck around the top there now. It's really annoying. Right, okay, that'll do. See if I can get 100 mils of that out. I stopped pouring before it because it's so thick. If you leave it till it gets to the line, you end up with that bit more. When I first started resin pouring, the stuff is so expensive. We all have a moan about that, I know. Um, and I thought I'd try buying one of those cheaper ones, which is like a 50 to 1. You get like a little syringe with it to measure it out. Can't get that top on properly. There we go. Um, this, I think, was about £38 for these two. It's one and a half litre. It gets cheaper the more you buy. Um, but that's a nice size for me. So yeah, I thought I'd buy this um, cheaper one, 50, 50 to 1 resin, just stirring it round to mix it now. I'll talk while I'm off camera doing it. Um, and I thought, yeah, that's so much. I mean, it is the price comparison is ludicrous. It was so much cheaper. And uh, so I thought that would be okay. And my first attempt didn't go well. I didn't tape the edges of my canvas. I put too much resin on, it ran over the edges and um, then when I was trying to clean the edges up I tore the back of the canvas but the resin itself looked okay. And the second time I did it um, I obviously didn't get that 50 to 1. The thing about a 2 to 1 is you can be a tiny bit out and it's not really going to make a huge difference. When you're 50 to 1 a tiny bit out really does make the difference between setting and not setting curing properly sticky patches and yeah it was a total disaster it stayed all sticky and horrible and then um, after a while yeah I didn't bother I've still got it back of the shed I didn't bother using it anymore because it was like such a disaster so uh, you see it starts going kind of cloudy but you've got to keep scraping the bottom when you do it and also clean your stirring stick and round the edges so yeah what was I saying 
forgotten now. It's 50, yeah, when I looked at the original one, the one that tore the canvas, I just stuck it to one side. And after about three, four months, I've got quite a lot of white in that painting. And I noticed that the resin had actually just gone yellow, just indoors, not in direct sunlight or anything, just in the house. So um, that was not a good one. The thing about the art varnishes is they are treated so that they don't yellow. What I'm going to do now is just pour this into... Is that going to be big enough? No, excuse me a moment, I'll just get another one. My granddaughter loves pot noodles, so I always have a collection of those here. Um, if you tip it into another um, container, it really helps with the mixing. What I've done there is just sprayed the inside with a little bit of um, spray silicon and then wiped it out. I always add a little bit of silicon into my mix as I'm mixing it. I'll do a little bit in a minute because it seems to help with those horrible divots and bubbles. I have no idea why. It doesn't really seem logical, but it works. Or at least it works for me. So that's good enough. Try and scrape out as much as you can, but doing it this way, you know that it's really thoroughly mixing. The mixing is really, really important with resin because if you don't mix, you'll get little patches that don't set properly and that's heartbreaking when you've got what you think is a really lovely painting. I'm going to wipe that out later with some tissue and wet wipe, but for now I'll just put it to one side and just keep on stirring and stirring and stirring. Makes your arms ache. I'm just going to swap hands. Not that I can really do it very well with the other hand, but... Stir, stir. Scrape my stick down. I must be coming up for my three minutes now. I'm going to leave a little bit of this resin. I don't think it will take all of that on there because I've just got, I'll show you here, just some little shapes to do. And these other little ones are like long pendant crystals. I thought I'd mix a little bit of, um, I use these soap micas quite often to mix with resin. I put a tiny little bit of the powder in and it colours them. Um, I've also done it with little bits of paints and usually that's fine but my last one I don't know whether it was the resin that I didn't mix properly or I put a bit too much paint in I think you're supposed to be able to put up to about 10% but I didn't think I put that much in but it just didn't set properly it stayed all tacky like toffee you could bend it it was disaster so I'm kind of cautious about using paint again right what I'm going to add in here now I just find that wet wipe to clean off my fingers. Saw it here just now. Oh well, use that bit of tissue. Trouble using tissue with silica. This one's got alcohol on, so it helps. But ordinary bits of tissue, you end up with half a ton of it on your fingers. I'm going to add a little of this. Um, it's like a powder thing, and it's holographic. Really pretty. Um, and I quite often put it with just like some pouring medium to make a sort of a clear I'm going to take my glove off I can't undo it oh, it's the only trouble with gloves isn't it they keep on for ages come on off you come right this little thing I think it was about 12 or 13 pounds but you only need a tiny bit so I keep telling my kids when I get my new motability scooter, mobility scooter, I'm going to make some paint with this. See, that's what it's just like, tiny little, and when the light shines on it, I don't think you can kind of get it in here, but it's really pretty. So I don't want too much because I don't want to cover all this pattern over. I just want enough to add a little bit extra on it. I could add a little bit of like the blue in there as well but I think that'll be kind of overkill and I'll just mix that in you can't really see it in there but there it is it's there and now I'm going to put just a couple of drops of that coconut milk serum in this one that I use um, it just seems to help like I say 
I've seen other people kind of spread it around with their hands and put it on then, but I just mix it in with a tub. Really make sure it's all mixed in. And then we'll just pour it on, see how we go. Like I say, I'm not really sure how much we need. So I'll put that on. And where is it? I've got an old credit card here. I just use them. I don't want the sharp edge. Just to help spread. Like I say, I just love the depth that resin gives to metallics. It really does seem to bring them out. I've tried other varnishes to try and mimic that effect, but the Deco Art Triple Thick is close, but it's such gloopy stuff to work with. That... And it's fine if you've got smaller paintings, but if you've got big ones, again, that works out expensive. You folk in the US seem to be able to buy everything in big sizes. Here in the UK, we're down to stupid little sizes of things. And that deco art just comes in a little tub that's like not as big as that. So a couple of coats of that and it's like, right, yeah, I'm going to need some more. That's better. And when I've got it all spread over, I'll... Um, Go over it with a blowtorch just to pop these little air bubbles. And then while I'm doing other stuff, I'll just keep an eye on it and just every now and then keep giving it another little torch. You get rid of the first air bubbles, but more of them keep popping up. And if you don't get rid of as many of them as you can, your resin sometimes looks a bit cloudy when it's done. You need to keep the blowtorch close enough to pop the bubbles but you don't really want to cook the resin um, it kind of heats it up a little bit which is quite handy because it makes it a little bit more runny for covering odd little spots there's a little spot down there that doesn't want to cover hopefully that always seems to be the edges this is just a tray for me so it's not the end of the world if it doesn't go right but you can see, I can see quite a lot, even with that spot of resin in it. It's still not, I'm going to just, right, squirt a little more in, mix it with my hands. Right, put that down. Usually when I just put it in as I'm mixing, that's okay, but I can see several little places here that it wasn't sticking. So I thought I'd try doing it that way. Right, that seems to have done the job. Made my gloves lovely and sticky now. Right, I'm going to take that one off. And just get a wet wipe and clean the edges up and then I'll torch some of those bubbles out and yeah this takes normally takes about sort of 24 hours to cure properly so when it's done I'll pop it up on the blog so you can see my nice rejuvenated tray well hopefully nice rejuvenated tray I'm a glass half full person, always convinced everything's going to work out easily. Excuse my arms getting in the way there, but it's the only way I can get enough pressure on. Right, that's cleaned that up. Torch, where are you? I've actually got a heat gun I meant to bring in and use, but my I was going out the other day. Come on. Right. 
Yeah, I was going out the other day and I couldn't find a hair dryer, so I took the heat gun indoors and dried my hair with that, which probably isn't the wisest, but it worked. All right, somewhere in here I have got a little hand torch. But I can't see it. Oh, that's Sod's Law, isn't it? So, sorry folk, I'm just going to have to lose you for a bit, I think. Go in and find my heat gun after all. Um... After a while, when you're painting, you accumulate so many things. My um, shed's getting a bit full, and normally the torch is just down here by my feet. Like I said, my eyesight's a bit duff, though, so it's entirely possible that it's here, and I just can't see it. Ah, there it is. Found it. Let's get the fluff off it. Ah, that's typical, isn't it? Oh, come on. Don't do this to me. There you are, getting an education in what to do with what goes wrong. Right. I saw a bit of fluff there. Is that going to fill up that little divot? Yeah. That's better. And it just, just literally go over it all and you'll see the little air bubbles popping. Then give it ten minutes or so and go over them again. This also gives you a chance to see if there's any little holes that haven't quite filled. You can just drop a little bit more resin in them. If when you finish, you find patches that you've missed, it's not the end of the world. You can just clean the surface with a bit of alcohol again, just to make sure there's no dust and bits got on it. Um, and yeah, once it's cured, give it a couple of days to fully cure. And you can always pour another coat of resin over fill in those little holes but you can't just fill in the holes because you never get that proper level surface so you have to fill in the holes and coat a thin coat on all the rest of it there that's looking okay see so i'll come back to here and there's still more little air bubbles coming up it's all that mixing puts a lot of air in it and it's so thick it's like thick kind of golden syrupy toffee so as you mix the air bubbles get trapped inside it I can see a little bit of the silicon there hopefully that will just rise to the surface and you can wipe it off when it's finished I did once get a painting with a couple of little silicon bubbles trapped in it but they look like little raindrops it worked out quite well because it was a flower painting but that's the only time it's ever happened to me. I don't know why. Just one of those quirks. Sometimes there isn't an answer for everything. Right. That's as far as I'm going to do now. Like I said, pleased with that. When it's dry, I'll pop it up on my blog, Jeannie's Art Adve Excuse me, Jeannie's Art Adventures. I'll just lift it up, see if you can see. sort of covered all over. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.